Hey YouTube, it's Dan. I am back again with a new video. I know I haven't produced content for YouTube in a while. Uh, this is because I've been busy. I'm getting ready for my thespian banquet and graduation is coming up very soon. And I've just got so much going on in my life. I haven't had a chance to do much, but summer's coming so I will have time to do new videos. And I have my iPhone here with me. And um, it's kind of nice that I have it here with me because today's video if you didn't notice from the title up there, is about iOS 5. Now before I go over iOS 5, if you didn't notice in the liner notes down below, um, I have some notes on iCloud. Not a lot of notes, but I just have a couple because iCloud seems to pop up a lot over the course of the iOS 5 features. So basically iCloud, it's Apple's new invention, and it's free. Not completely free, but it's free. You sign up for free, and you get five gigabytes of storage. That's 5,000 megabytes. Does not sound like a lot at all. My iPhone is 32 gigabytes. My iPod Classic I've got in the other room is 160 gigabytes. My laptop is 250. My external hard drive is 320. Five gigabytes is not a lot. But, there's a catch. You see, purchased music, apps, books, and your photo stream, which I'll talk about a little bit, later is not going to count against your five gigabytes at all which means all that does count against it is mail docs your camera roll um, account information settings and other app data most of those are small files so five gigabytes is going to go a long way with this now um, there's one thing where it'll automatically add all of your purchased music that you buy in itunes over to um, your iCloud and you can listen to it on here on your iPhone if, if you got a purchase on here of course it's going to be here but you can listen to it on iCloud you can download it to your iPad listen to it on there without having to go buy it or sync it through to iTunes so that's going to make things a lot easier then you've got um, a 2495 option that they've got that I didn't put in the liner notes where it talks about how they'll scan your collection and anything that's in iTunes they'll automatically add and anything that's not they'll upload for you and all that fun stuff. More info will be on that later. iCloud will be available this fall. Now I've got a bunch of notes here on the side of my screen I'm going to be referencing while I do this because there is a lot with iOS 5. But just to get this out of the way so you don't waste your time watching this video, only bother watching this if you have or plan on getting one of these devices. The iPhone 3GS the iPhone 4, the iPod Touch 3rd or 4th Gen, or the iPad 1 or 2. These are the only devices that are going to be compatible with iOS 5. Now, getting into things. First update, huge, big, all hail Steve Jobs, it is the Notification Center. <coughs> I've been an iOS user since the iPod Touch first came out. I've been using the iPhone since iOS 3. And there's two glaring issues I've always had with this. The first one is the home screen. Now normally there's a photo here I got plugged in it's charging. It gives you the time, the date, your bar up here, battery meter if you're charging or a photo if you're not, and slide to unlock. That's all it gives you. This real estate could definitely be better spent. There's a whole jailbreaking community with apps where they better spend this space. Apple's finally done that. Now on the home screen, there's going to be icons for all your different apps, like messaging, um, I don't know, uh, why I use Zombie Farm, AIM, you know, different things to get notifications from. And you can just slide right on the icon, unlock the app, right to the app, and go to that notification. Now you don't need to go, all right, click, unlock, app, folder, click. No, it, it's gone. Now it's just slide to unlock right there. And it's going to show you, now, the other fun thing. Now you're going to get the weather and the stock uh, ticker with that, as well as with the other notification center, which is Android-esque, where you'll just reach the top of the screen, pull down, everything, right there. And you can just click on it. And no more of those annoying pop-ups where it'll have like a blue pop-up that'll say like AIM, I am from Jim, hey, how are you? And then like view and cancel and then something else will come up and you'll lose that pop-up and another pop-up will come and another pop-up will come and your video will stop or your game will stop or, or 
you know, you'll lose control of what you're doing. It's gone. Now it's going to be a notification top of the screen. It's going to roll in. It's going to say like mail, new email, TED, subject, preview line, and roll away. Then you can slide down like an Android. And there it is. That works. Up next is iMessage. Now iMessage is going to be built into the texting app, your messages app. And just think of it like this. BlackBerry Messenger for iOS. It's as simple as that. It's basically going to let you send free messages between iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad. Here's the cool part now, because of iCloud. I could start iMessaging somebody with this, like the friend of mine who has an iPhone. I have a friend up in Connecticut who has one. I could start like iMessaging her on this. Now, this would never happen, but let's say I forget this at home and I only have my iPad with me and I'm at the library. Well, I can take my iPad, go on, log into the Wi-Fi, go into the message app that's there now, and there's my whole conversation, and I can continue my conversation from there. Um, up next is Newsstand. I'm just going to briefly cover this one, but it's basically a folder for magazine subscriptions. It's going to be a folder. You can go right to the um, new section of the App Store, buy magazines. Pretty simple. And just so you know, I've kind of got to short cheese some of these to try and fit this into one or two 10-minute videos. So I will short cheese a few of the less important updates and highlight the bigger ones, like Notification Center or Reminders. That's the next one. It's a to-do list now built into the iPhone. And it's location-based. This is good. Right now I've got like my notes app and I've got a to-do list app on my iPhone that I'll take out and I'll go, remember to do this assignment, remember to go here, remember to go there. I don't need to do that now. Set my notification. Set a location. Like, let's say I need to remember to pick up milk at the grocery store. Remember to get milk and then set location to grocery store and like I can pick a spot on, on the map I think it is. I don't actually know how they're doing the location thing. And like then when I go to ShopRite, it'll go, woo, woo, dude, get milk, notification, here you go. And that's also going to work with iCal, Outlook, and Cloud, iCloud, what a surprise. <laughs> Twitter has now been integrated into iOS. Steve Jobs is kind of hearing our prayers. You're going to sign into Twitter once on iOS in settings, and then you can tweet from Safari, Photos, Camera, YouTube, or Macs. Um, contacts is going to apply your friend's Twitter ID and their profile picture. So you can attach at replies right there. And you can add a location no matter what app you're in. Now this is good, but let's get some Facebook integration going here. I like Twitter. I've got the app for Twitter. I may get rid of the app for Twitter. I don't know. Probably not because it didn't say anything about reading tweets in iOS. So I'm still going to need a way to read them. But, you know, let's get some Facebook going in here. Steve, if you're... If you're watching this, Steve, please, we hail you, we praise you, we worship you. Now, please, give us Facebook integration. And you can tweet photos right from the iPhone now. One, two, three. Take photo, Twitter's built into the camera, add text and tweet. Boom. Speaking of photos and camera, they've updated the camera app in the iPhone. iPhone is always with you, so it's obviously great for photos if there is something. You know, if something happens, I take out my phone, go to camera, and snap picture huh. well now you can open the camera right from the lock screen because there go there's going to be an icon right over here this is going to be shorter and then it's going to be right here a button you just click it takes you right to the camera um, there's going to be grid lines now and whatnot you can pinch to zoom <clears throat> and you can now use the volume up button to take a picture it's beautiful because I try and take pictures of me and my girlfriend when we're together I got the phone like this, I got the thing here because I have the 3GS. I've got the thing facing here like this, and I'm holding like this, and I'm trying to get her and I both into the shot, and like, king, and the camera like shakes, and sometimes I miss and stuff. Now it's like, aim the camera, hit the button, boom. No more shaky, weird positioning like this to try and hit. So much easier. In photos, oh, and before I forget, if you have photo stream in iCloud enabled, your photos will go automatically to all your other devices. And with photos, you're going to be able to crop, rotate, enhance, and remove red eye right in iPhone, right, right in the photo app on the iPhone. Beautiful. 
Now I'm going to wrap this video up because I'm clocking in at almost 10 minutes and in part two we're going to go over some more new features. This is Dan signing off.